Good evening, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining me, Shivani Gupta, on this special IPL auction presentation. Ahead of the 15th season of the IPL, the fifth mega auction is set to play, take place this weekend. A total of 590 players will go under the hammer, with 370 of those being Indian talent and a total of 228 capped players from across all countries. There are 10 teams, remember, this time around. And let us begin with a look at the purse that each of these teams have left because they have retained some and acquired some others. So here's a look at the purse that is left as far as the teams are concerned, starting with the top few. So Punjab has retained only two players. They have the maximum purse of 74 crores, 68 for Sunrisers, Rajasthan 62, around 60 for uh, you know uh, the new team. Super Giants and also 57 for Royal Challengers Bangalore. Let's take a look at the rest five as well. From 56, 52, 51, 48, 48 for the two most balanced uh, teams, Mumbai and Chennai, the two most successful teams. They actually have the least purse. They've also, of course, retained many of their players. Up to two, four players each team could retain. But let's also take a look at the new entrants. Of course, there are two new teams as I talked about. And let's take a look at the first of these teams, the Gujarat Titans, as they are called now. Owned by CVC Capital, the winning bid was over 56,000 crore rupees. They have picked Hardik Pandya as their captain. Rashid Khan, very important T20 player. Shubman Gill, very important Indian talent, is in their team. Ashish Nehra is going to be their head coach. Gary Kirsten is appointed as the mentor. Let's look at the Lucknow team now. This is, of course, the first big UP team owned by Sanjeev Goenka. The winning bid was over 7,000 crores. KL Rahul will lead this team. Marcus Toynis and Ravi Bishnoi are the other team's players also picked. Andy Flower, very experienced coach, is going to be their head coach, while Indian former batsman Gautam Gambhir has been appointed as their mentor. Now, there are anywhere between two to four players, as I mentioned, who've been retained or acquired by the teams, and we will run those as we go along. But let me introduce the guests who are joining us on the show. Shishir Hatangri, CEO of the BCA, former Mumbai captain as well. I asked Memon, cricket writer, commentator, and Amrit Mathur, who's also been with the Delhi Daredevils earlier, sports administrator and columnist, joining us on the show. Let me come to you, Amrit, first up. A lot of auction strategies are being talked about. Usually, it is expected that in such an auction, the teams would like to go for the players they had earlier and, you know, have that familiarity. Do you believe that is going to be the case or the teams will think afresh? Listen, quite likely, some of the teams will want their own players back. I think CSK would want Duplessis back. They would want Shabdul Thakur back. Mumbai would want Ishan Kishan back, Trent Bolt back. So, I think... Teams will like to retain the main players and buy the main players which they had the previous season. But you know the the auction this time is more tricky hmm. for a few reasons. Hmm, hmm. A, you have 213 slots, 217 slots, but instead of eight, you have 10 teams bidding for those players. Yeah. Also, while there's additional demand, the pool of players is largely the same. Hmm. So Indian talent has always been expensive. I think the prices will only go up mm -hmm. because the two teams are looking for maybe 15 Indian players each, 30 additional slots to be filled. Prices will go through the roof. Mm. And the people who are going to attract more attention, they are known, you know, whether it's Shreya Sahir or, you know, Padikal or Ishan Kishan. They are the, you know, names, standard names, much in demand, Shikhar Dhawan. They'll go for high prices. But it'll be interesting, I think, uh, this auction for two reasons. One, what happens to the so-called senior Indian players? Mm -hmm. You know, Raidu, Rana, Amit Mishra, Piyush Chawla. Because don't forget, this auction is for the next three years. Yeah. So if you are a bit over the hill, the team will think many times before buying you for the next three years. Mm. So I think that's a, a concern, especially for the senior players. Mm. Also, I think by and large, the market for foreign players is going to be low. It's going to be thunder. Really? Because there are plenty of options available. Huh. And those days of 16.25 crores for a Chris Morris or even 9.25 for a Gotham hmm. who didn't play a single game, those are over. Teams are now very smart. They've done their homework. They've done their mock drills. They've done their data crunching. 
they want return on investment. Okay. And experience has shown that a 15 crore player or a 16 crore player normally doesn't do. Uh, I ask, let me come to you. Uh, this is also, you know, uh, when there's such a mega auction, there is also a roster for how the players come into the auction. So first, the 10 marquee players will come up. Let's see how the bidding goes for them. We'll run who these marquee players are, uh, are in just a bit. But, you know, there are a lot of good names towards the end as well. There are a lot of slots to be filled by the teams. You know, everybody needs multiple, multiple uh, uh, players. As a, strat a strategy, would it be better to go for quality and who you want up front? And then, you know, pick up from whoever is left at the end or be a little circumspect and keep a purse with you towards the end. No, I, I think I agree with uh, Amrit. I mean, you know, from the first auction to now, it's evolved. Even the tactics and the strategies. Uh, you just don't go and buy a big name, you know, because it might help you get retention or it might increase your brand. Ultimately, you have to win the title for the brand to kind of, you know, uh, become even more, even more uh, valuable. So I think that yes, there will be uh, there will be circumspection. There will be I, I think they'll be very clever. Mm. Uh, ultimately, the objective is to get a good balanced team in place, a team which can help you win win the title. I mean, ultimately, that's the objective. And I think what is going to happen is that most of the attention will be featured on about fifteen players. So mm. if a team like Mumbai or Chennai or Delhi, they've retained four players. They need to get those 11, hmm. 15 players out of which 11 will play consistently throughout the tournament. You hmm. might have a team, uh, you know, a squad up to 25, but the others will be fill-ins rather than the main, the core team that you need. Hmm. Uh, where the prices can flare up, of course, is that two franchises or three have set their sights on a one on the particular player. player. Hmm. So, you know, then the... The, the, the bidding war starts and prices can go out of whack. But by and large, let's remember also that apart from Punjab, who've got 74, 75 crore, the others have got largely between 48 and 55, 55 60, yeah. you know, for getting about 15, 18 players. And that's if you spend mm -hmm. or you splurge on two players, you might not have enough money when, you know, when you need to kind of fill in your gaps. Uh, and one of the things is this is a two-day auction. Yeah. You need to also have money in hand. You might For get really, some day. really good bargain buys the second day or later on. But if you don't have money, obviously you can't buy them. So you have to be very tactful is why my way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, of course, when it is an auction, a lot of tactics come into play. Everybody comes with their strategy. They also know what the other team's strategies and bidding behavior have been over a period of time, who the other team needs, who you need. But speaking of filling up a team and, you know, building a team around the core uh, of three to four players that most of these teams have, Shishir, what are the most important skill sets required to build a team from afresh? Your learnings, uh, Shivani, from the past IPLs, hmm. your mistakes from the past IPL, and of course, uh, how you can fit in the, the names of players in that jigsaw uh, of your squad. And once you do that uh, in your mock drills and all that, you have to have a plan B. Because remember, a lot of these teams actually bid only so that you spend the money so that they have the choice in the second on the second day and third day hmm. so a lot of it is uh, strategy a lot of it is uh, planned in a sense that you know you can uh, uh, you can you can actually make others spend the money while yeah. this a player A may not be your priority. No, but so, I'm talking about are, skill sets here. Uh, wicket keeping, batsmen, fast bowlers, Indians, foreigners. Who do you think the teams need the most to build a winning combination? What are the skill sets and the players that they will go for most? Very simple. Uh, the, the players who are just playing for India in white ball, who are doing well, hmm. uh, will be sought after. Okay. Uh, the ones who are uh, ones who are who are back in the auction because the players know that they might have got or they would get a much higher price or command a much higher price rather than being retained. I know some of the players opted not to be retained hmm. because they felt that they could fetch a know, higher the chances price. Chances of them, uh, yes, they, you know, they, their their uh, their rate card would be higher as hmm. uh, the bids went up. So uh, the first thing would be, of course, to get uh, the right balance. But then with the balance. The first priority would be to pick players who are playing for India in white ball, doing well. You know, and the last, uh, you know, the last memory of a, of a player in form is probably somebody like Shreyas. 
today is his knock of 80 would probably draw him that extra bit today tomorrow from uh, uh, mm. from the uh, from the franchises and also the fact that they uh, he's been talked about as leadership material so yeah but, but um, would that change too much of how the teams were viewing him earlier because you know 14 years have also taught us that you cannot just go by what the australians have done in bbl for example a lot of them play very well there and then there are flops in the ipl so recent matches or the recency of your performances i think teams have become smarter on that too no point i mean uh, nothing against shreyas iyer of course his knock today will only add to what his quality and his value is uh, but if he, even if he hadn't scored that well i think he would have still been very sought after amrit you wanted to come in uh, is there a particular <coughs> skill set that is the most desirable for teams a tearing fast bowler and there are only as many to go around Listen, Shivani, it's pretty clear. Number one, you need seven Indian players in your team. You're yeah. playing eleven, so you want the right Indian talent to be bought. That's number one. That's the starting point for every team in an auction. That we need enough Indian talent so that we can put seven good guys on the park every time we play. Number two, you ask for specific skill sets. Mm. I think there are three or four categories which each team is looking for. you are looking for a fast bowler who can bowl 140 hmm. plus you are looking for a finisher hmm. you are looking for an all rounder or a, or a player with multiple skills and recently you are looking for a mystery spinner okay so these are categories which will attract big bets because over the years teams have learned that these three four categories make a major impact on the outcome of the matches coming back to one more point which was mentioned i think you mentioned it ayaz also touched upon it about the preparation and how teams have got smart there is 14 years of experience behind you you know exactly what you want hmm. all that is true the teams are very smart they've done their homework all the due diligence has been done hmm. but the auction is a difficult beast yes it is you know it will throw up googlies <laughs> you will go as we uh, i have said out of whack for certain players you might get sucked into a bidding war and pay a, you know obscene price for a player and sometimes there can even be a miscalculation on a player and you might end up buying a mobike for the price of a mercedes it's happened in the past <laughs> it'll happen again well chris more is becoming the most expensive foreigner was only last year yeah but <laughs> that was for a limited purpose for in a very small auction true this time you got 10 teams trying to build the squads yeah for 25 players each so this is a much bigger auction to control and okay. you can't go with just one player in mind because that one player might be chased by multiple teams yeah precisely so and i think dynamic, uh, i just want to quickly go different. through this list of marquee <clears throat> players who will go up for auction first up uh, and of course you know most of the indians here would be very well sought after as our guests are mentioning there's the likes of you know r ashwin shreyas ayer mohammad shami shikhar dhawan Uh, as the indians in this marquee list and they will come up for auction first then there are the australians like david warner there's fab du plessis kagiso kagiso rabada there's trent bolt pat cummins quinton de kock but here's the tricky part even in the marquee list and otherwise some of these players for example the australians and the south africans ayas are not going to be available for the entire ipl do you think that will have a major impact I think it will. I mean, it depends on the number of days they're available or not. I also think I, I don't know. Maybe Amrit or Shishit may be able to shed, shed some light on this. We are still in the COVID, you know, living in the world of COVID. Huh. And if it, if the tournament is going to be played in India this year, it's going to be basically Mumbai, Navi Mumbai, and Pune. Now a lot of the squads are chosen for what how their home pitches would be. Hmm. We don't know what next season will will holds for us hmm. where COVID is concerned. Now this is a three-year auction. Are they kind of thinking the team managements or the strategists thinking about only this year's tournament are they looking at the next two years now even for somebody like chennai that has ms dhoni the you know the biggest captaincy mind in the shorter format or the white ball format uh chennai possibly would like to groom someone but leaving the chennai question alone there are a lot of teams that are looking for captains how do you go about selecting who your next captain could be It could be a case of tic tac toe. Just take a chance, like you know, Hardik Pandya. Uh, they've gone on uh, on intuition and uh, a, a possibility that 
you know, he could lead a side because uh, they may have felt that uh, he has the qualities but not the experience. Yeah. There are some teams that might have somebody like MS Dhoni who may not lead the team. He might just be guiding the team as uh, with somebody else leading. Hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you have a Dhoni on the park, hmm. uh, you know he, he'll be able to advise his captain or, sh or, you know, control the game through his captain's voice. So that's an advantage. Captaincy, mm. believe me, is very important. That is where I think somebody like uh, Mumbai Indians who already have a Rohit Sharma, who's been in the system as a leader for so many years, uh, with the franchise, and I'm not talking about India here, I'm talking yeah. about the franchise. And there is a continuity uh, with Rohit and Mumbai Indians. It gives them that edge. It gives them that edge to be able to, you know, uh, be prudent in their buys. Also be very, very vigilant on the players they want who will probably fit that jigsaw. And uh, Ayaz made a very valid point. Uh, there is no home game here. So, you know, your pickings are going to be, again, a lot based on the fact that uh, this is the scale of the player. And do we need him? Uh, is, does he fit into our scheme of things? Okay. Because if it was home and away, things would have been different. Let me also ask uh, Amrit, what is this thing with mentorship? Why do teams like to have mentors? <laughs> I mean, wh what does it do? There are already too many people. You've got a head coach, you've got a bowling coach, you've got a fielding coach, batting coach, and you've got big players and international players who can all mix and give each other their input. So what is with the mentor? I think, Shivani, just give me a minute before I come to this mentor issue. We were talking about captains. Yeah. The teams have realized that you need an Indian captain. Okay. For two, three reasons. A, you've got 18 Indian players in your 25. Secondly, you know, uh, the experience with Steve Smith, Warner, Morgan has shown that, you know, foreign players as captains don't work because only four can play. And if a captain is out of form, it creates a problem. Yeah. So, you know, it's not easy unless you are somebody outstanding like Kane Williamson, you would look for an Indian captain. Hmm. Now, coming to this issue of mentor, you know, I think you were correct that there are already too many people surrounding the team. There are various coaches. You know, there's a wicket keeping coach also in some teams. There's a strength and conditioning coach. There's a mental conditioning coach. There is a bowling, batting, you know, all kinds of coaches. There are the video analysts. Uh, there are, so I really don't know what extra a mentor can uh, contribute. You know, let me give, tell you something from example. In the initial years when we, and when I was with Delhi Daredevils, hmm. At one time, we had five international captains in our squad. Yes, I remember. So if five international captains and maybe two, three Ranji captains can't decide strategy and you know, tactics, uh. I don't think any additional person can actually make a difference. But I think it's a fashion. It's something you know teams have tried. Hmm. The Indian team tried it recently in the World Cup in Dubai. It didn't really succeed. Yeah. So maybe you just feel you need more opinion, more voices in the dressing room to decide. But what actually it the difference it makes on the ground, I'm very doubtful. Okay. Uh, Shishan, I'll also... I'll just, I, I yeah, just tell ahead. you what, the advantage of a mentor and <clears throat> what a mentor means. The yeah. mentor is supposed to absorb the pressure of the owners and uh, take the blows from the players uh, when they lose and when they win. So really? I've, I, I thought the cap that. that was the captain's job. No, no, the mentor is the shock absorber. Believe me, I've seen it from close quarters. He's supposed to be able to absorb the pressure of the owners. So basically, he's a, he's a cricketer of repute, but a punching bag. <laughs> okay, that's a good way to put it. But I also want to go across to the other big issue that has come up. Because former India captain Sunil Gavaskar has now urged you know, the IPL to have a cap. As far as the uncapped Indian players are concerned, he has said, and I quote, the fair thing would be to put a limit of, say, 1 crore rupees for uncapped players so that they know to earn more, they have a lot of work, hard work ahead. Easy money, he says, has spoiled many a promising talent and putting cap on an uncapped player will make him eager to keep performing. Far too many get carried away and lose focus and are out of the game or seek the mirage of greener looking pastures. Very big statement, uh, Amrit, coming in there from Sunil Gavaskar. Uh, what do you make of what he has said to have a cap for uncapped players? Because we have seen several uncapped players catching the fancy of the franchises and going for big bucks. Listen, I see Sunny's point that there is a, pers there is a uh, chance that sudden access to a lot of money may sort of disrupt you and distract you. But I disagree. 
Okay. The entire IPL is built on everything being decided by market forces. You have 250 players and it's not through negotiation, it's through a transparent auction. The market decides what you're worth. Hmm. So if an under 19 player or an uncapped player is deserving of a higher financial remuneration and a higher price, so why, why prevent that? Because no, but here's the question. I play, I'll play player. the devil's advocate. One, yeah. we've seen that sometimes players don't deserve their price tag. I'm not saying that uncapped players don't. The second question is, Amrita, this is the Indian yeah. Premier League. It is now the major feeder for the Indian national team. Now, if the Indian Premier League ends up disturbing the Indian talent, then maybe the BCCI can look at this. Listen, I don't see how it disturbs the Indian talent because if you think a player is sort of, you know, not focused on his cricket, there are ways to, you know, mend that. But a tournament, a league which is built entirely on market forces uh, uh, sh should not prevent a certain section of players to get the benefits which it gives to others. Okay. You know, if that was the case, why not put uh, caps on other, other categories also? Why is it under 19? Why not 22? So I think it's uh, you can't create the artificial barriers in a system which works totally according to market forces. If a player is good, he's getting that money because multiple teams are bidding for him. But, Otherwise, you wouldn't okay. get that money. I get your so point. But I ask... merit in your ability, sure. your talent. This is merit-driven. This is market-driven. Uh, one wouldn't like to tinker with these, with those forces and with that kind of a dynamics. But I ask, is Sunil, uh, Sunil Gavaskar also right in saying that, you know, sometimes people do lose the way. They do lose the hunger when they've already made big bucks. Yeah, I mean, that can happen even if you're 25. You know, you can lose your hunger, you can lose your way or 24 or whatever age. So I think, you know, to the extent that this is a driven by market forces, I completely accept what Amrit is saying. Uh, and what, who's to decide what ceiling? You know, I mean, Gavaskar proposed a one crore ceiling, saying, okay, you can give them up to one crore. I see more than that, hmm. even for the under-19 age, and it's completely, uh, uh, you know, outside, offline compared to the IPL. The mentoring has to start when you're young and you're being inducted into the system and to how to tackle money. Maybe you can have a, a trust in which the money is put, which is managed by the family and not directly by the ward or some such place, steps in place. But otherwise... No, he, but know, he's uh, not talking about why, age why, alone. Why, One second, Ayaz, he's not talking about age alone. He's saying capped and uncapped. Yes. Some, some players yes, he put made, the capped he made that of cap. over 21. Correct. But you know, you can have a player who's uncapped at the age of 28, 30. Exactly. And then that's what I'm you, saying. You, that's, it becomes very cruel. Because he may be very deserving of twice or thrice the money which is being paid because he's uncapped. So I think that there is a there is a way to look at it more logically, which is that you know market forces will determine the price. There is the threat that you know too much money can sway a person, destroy a career. But those have to be looked at differently from a, a, a normal situation. That's a very abnormal situation, and for that you have to create certain other plans or processes which will prevent. You know, some cases will will occur at whatever age. Okay. But by and large, if those are restricted, those number of cases don't, you know, are restricted, seriously restricted, then I think it will work out well. Okay, Shishir, I'll take a comment from you also on this because this is an interesting debate to have. Yes, and I have my view on it. Uh, I'm, having watched some players very closely, there are two things. Uh, I've always believed the IPL is a means to an end. Uh, the end being playing for India. Yeah. And sometimes when the a means becomes your end, you know, you're quite satisfied, uh, you're secure financially, and it might uh, take a, your, your desire to play for India or the ability to, or your effort to, to strive for that India uh, badge hmm. may reduce because you have a sense of security. Hmm. That worries me at times because uh, I'm not saying that players don't do it. They want to play for India, hmm. but, uh, you know, money is always going to be a motivation and it's, it's all right for money to be a motivation. Hmm. but don't ignore domestic cricket. Don't ignore a Ranji Trophy because then your priorities change. And with time, uh, when your priorities change, you know, the desire to play for the country, you know, there's no market forces there. This is a, a very clear situation of a team needing seven players and seven Indian players to play mm. for you. And uh, you double it up with the reserves, it means there are 14 players actually in the running to play for a team because you'll have injuries, etc., etc. So my worry is when you get that big amount every year. Okay. Uh, somewhere you undervalue domestic cricket. Uh, you see that as just going through the motions to keep yourself fit. 
and you you could yes. lose your way. So yes, I agree with uh, uh, Sunny Bai that uh, one needs to really look at it individually or make sure. You know, a 27 so, year old guy, if he's not playing for India, I have no problems with him earning 10 yeah. crores. No, I think it. maybe the means to uh, check this could be different instead of a cap for all uncapped players, as I asked and both of you were mentioning. I am uh, almost out of time. I'll give Amrit a final word. Is there any one player that you have your specific eyes on who could uh, go off the charts? Any one player in, on your mind, Amrit? Listen, I don't want to guess about one name who will go out of the chart, but I'm only intrigued. What is Pujara doing in this uh, IPL auction? Oh God! He hasn't been a part of an IPL team since 2014. He was picked by CSK last, last year. year. He was last, last year. year, yeah. Almost as an afterthought. So what is ah, he maybe. doing in this auction? Yeah, but he was there. Yeah. So what do you think he's doing in the auction? Uh, Market forces, wishing, no, Amrit. Market forces. <laughs> wishing. All well, right. We all wish for the best here. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, wish all the players and the teams the very best. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We will, of course, continue to get you all the highlights and the updates. Who really does set the charts off as far as this IPL auction is concerned? Thanks a lot for watching.